We are responding to the global crisis of what's happening in Ukraine in the way that we know how to, which is to pray. And we've gathered uh, multi-faith leaders from a variety of places. Most of them have some connection with the United Nations and the work that happens here around civil society. And so we have gathered in the chapel, Tillman Chapel of the uh, Church Center for the United Nations. And it's across the street from the campus it's been here for many years uh, as a testament to the importance of faith and faith communities around what happens in that multilateral space of the United Nations. So we're here to pray and we're also here to demand freedom for the Ukrainians and, and really for all humans. It's important for faith leaders to gather whenever there is human suffering, whenever there are people who are being treated unjustly. It's important for those who say that they're led by faith uh, to gather, not just to pray, but to pray and then to do something about what we're praying for, together. And being together was the best. That's the way that we move things, only together. Let us take a moment of silence for those who we have lost to senseless war. Our religious traditions at their best stand at the foundation of human rights, even democracy, and that we, the onus is upon us to do everything we can to ensure that this ugly advance of autocracy is stopped. We have several, as the Baptist World Alliance and BWA, we have several churches there on the ground. We have the All Ukrainian Union that coordinates those churches. They have over 2,000 churches where, that are working really hard to help those who have been displaced. And so this also lets them know directly how much the world is standing with them. We just thought it was even important to be here today at the United Nations. I think this is significant in itself. Well, uh, there are uh, billions of people of faith all over the world. They make up the majority of our planet and, and religious leaders and, and people of faith have to, to be uh, the moral authority on matters. And it's very clear that what's happening in Ukraine is immoral. Um, so it's important that we stand up and that we, we demand that uh, moral action is taken and that we pray for, for less violence and, and less hostilities in Ukraine today. I read this morning's headline that there could be up to a million refugees right now. So one person really is fundamentally affecting the lives in a devastating sense of one million. That just cannot stand. So we need to pray for some sense of recognition of what's happening in his own mind. And parallel to that, I think, is praying for the Russian people. There are a good number who are fighting the government's action. And then, of course, the vast majority is subject to the barrage of great misinformation and propaganda. It's the number one request we've received from uh, Baptist leaders in Ukraine and across the region to pray for a cessation of war and the restoration of peace in communities that flourish together. It's been remarkable as we visited with leaders in Russia, Ukraine, and across the region that they are united in one spirit, pray for peace. It is a powerful testament that we understand that religious diplomacy is important for all of us, for Baptists, for Christians, uh, for uh, Jewish, for, for Muslims, for Hindus, for everyone to stand together and prophetically, um, uh, prophetically pronounce that peace needs to happen. Bishop Tutu says uh, that, rest his soul, he said that our lives are inextricably bound. Humanity, because of humanity, we are bound together. So no matter where we are, we are bound together. So even in wherever, wherever room you're in, whatever place you're in, pray. Pray that the hearts of faith leaders and leaders all over making decisions will change. And pray that those on the ground are protected and that there is a way of escape made now. Let's also pray that the Lord will use this challenging moment to turn our spears into plows. Don't give up. You are not alone. It may feel like you're dark, it, like, like, like things are too dark and you cannot see light. That's why we are praying for them. I would say to the Ukrainian people, keep holding on and just the light of hope. Uh, it, it will not extinguish once you keep it alive. We are praying for you and sending the aid.
that is needed. Don't give up.